everybody. Um, today I'm going to show you a little demonstration of the moon in phases. And I'm going to show you how you can use the moon to do rough navigations. Now, some of you might remember from um, my uh, Earth and uh, two scale model of my Earth moon system, you might remember my six inch lunar globe. I'm going to use this but I'm also going to use this just in the beginning just to show you something and this light sorry I don't mean to shine it in your face um, I wish I had a two scale large um, orb non-point source light but I don't but so we're just gonna have to make do with that first thing I want to show you is I just want to explain something here I'm trying to get it away from the camera because it doesn't need to be there First, I just want to explain that the lit side of the moon, so you have the Earth, right? And we all know that the Earth has experiences day because the light side is facing the sun. Well, it's the same thing with the moon. This part you see is just the daytime, daytime part of the moon, just like it is on the Earth. Now, obviously, these are not this close together. I understand that. As a matter of fact, this scale, they would be 60 feet apart. Um, I, um, as I demonstrated in my video of my two-scale model. Uh, so, you just, when you're standing on the Earth, and the Moon is in different places in its orbit, you get different phases, and then from your vantage point you look at it a certain way. I've explained all this before. I will link to some relevant videos below. But, I'm going to explain phases another way. I am going to use this as my sun. Um, try to keep, I'm trying to keep it out of everybody's eyes. I'm just going to put that down right there. Okay, but before I get started here, I do not have a two scale model. This is that six inch diameter moon globe, which means my Earth would have to be two feet in diameter, which means the two would be separated by 60 feet. Anyone want to take a guess on how far away the sun would be? Well, first of all, the sun would be over 200 feet in diameter. About 220. That's how big it would be compared to this six inch object. Half a foot. All right. Now, <laughs> that would have to be my, let's see, what am I, I calculated, and that's rough based on astronomical unit being 1496,000 zero 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 kilometers instead of the exact value so that's almost four and a half miles away so not only would my sun have to be almost 220 feet in diameter it would have to be almost four and a half miles away so a scale model isn't practical and that's fine because i'm just showing you trying to illustrate a point here okay first of all i got to go through phases i am so sorry for blinding people here this would be equivalent to what we call so my computer keeps kicking on the screensaver even though the laptop's closed. I don't know why. Um, this would be a new moon. It's the side, it's the nighttime side of the moon. And I'm, this is going to be as if you're looking up. And I'm, obviously I'm holding the moon. I'm not really holding the moon up there. But th this would be as if you're looking up. So um, the new moon would be the nighttime side of the moon where we don't see the moon and it's out during the day. If you really wanted to look for it, you can find it. And I'm going to try to do that at some point, but not in the near future. Field season's actually about to begin. I think winter is finally friggin' over. Um, and then as the moon moves in its orbit and from our vantage point on Earth, we start to see a waning crescent. Okay. And it moves a little further, and we see a first quarter, or what most people commonly call a half moon. A little further, we get what's called a waxing gibbous. All right. Now, we can, if the right side of the moon is lit in the northern hemisphere from your vantage point, that means it's waxing. It's moving towards the full moon, Okay, which would be roughly like this. And at a full moon, that would roughly be equivalent to the second quarter, although we don't call it that, okay? So that would be your full moon. So remember, if it's lit on the right side, that means you're moving from a new moon towards a full moon. Well, if it's lit on your left side, so here's our full moon again, that means you are moving 
from a full moon to a new moon. So then you would have a, sorry, you would get from your full, you would get a waning gibbous. Then you would get the other half moon, as people commonly call it, which is actually called the third quarter. And then you would get a crescent, waning crescent, and then eventually you're back to the new moon. Okay, so that's how that works in a nutshell. That's how we go through the phases. Yes, I was moving my representative, my what my light source, but I'm only working in a six foot diameter here. Okay, um, so that's how the phases appear and whatnot. Well, how can we use that for navigation? Well, new moon, you're kind of SOL. Why would you even want to use this for navigation? I'm going to say right off the bat, it's not accurate. All right, but there are some advantages to using it because as you move, remember I said the new moon is visible only during the day. Well, as you move from a new moon to your full moon, okay, which is only visible at night, the moon is still out during the day, increasingly becoming out, out more and more at night. All right, so you can use it to navigate during the day when you can't see things like stars. Another advantage to using the moon, even at night, if it's out at night, um, say there's a lot of light pollution and you can't see very many stars, or if there's very thin but consistent clouds where you can't really see the stars anyway, this reflects enough sunlight where it will shine through some really thin clouds, okay? You won't get good photos of it. You get some cool moon and cloud pics, but you won't get accurate pictures of the moon. But anyway, you could use it then as well when the stars aren't visible very well. Okay, well, let's go to our half moon, first quarter. doesn't matter which one. We'll just go to that there, okay? So we've got this side of the moon lit up. Generally, all right, if the moon is near its lunar noon or its highest point in the sky within about 20 degrees either way, if you draw a line from this point to this point, draw a straight line, it will generally point south. Now the only time it's going to be really accurate is if you're near mid-latitudes in the northern hemisphere and you're near that, that uh, moon noon if you will all right another thing too if it is lit on the right side okay like it is here means it's waxing even if it doesn't matter if it's a crescent or a quarter or a gibbous it doesn't matter obviously this isn't gonna work with full moon because the whole thing's lit um the lit side points west generally just relative to the sky the lit side points west now as the moon rises that lit angle is going to be lower so it's not it's like with the south thing 20 degrees either way or maybe a little more 45 it, it's a good indicator if the left side is lit in the waning phase this side, the lit side, is going to point towards the east, generally. So that's just a quick and dirty way of how you can use the moon to navigate. All right, so I think I'm just gonna end this one right there. I do wanna say a couple things first. There will be, I am working on the the photos I took on April 20th, 420. Um, there will be a couple, maybe three videos out of that. It's looking like my planned 20 April 27th observations are going to be rained out. That's what the forecast says as of right now. I can even show you right now, um, which isn't looking too good. And every time I make predictions like weeks in advance, we get bad weather. This is, it's like a hundred percent chance of that. I don't, or at least partially bad to the point where I can't do it. It's just like ridiculous. So where is this? Of course, watch, it's not going to work now. 
Huh. Well, it's telling me the high on Friday. Something's wrong, because it's telling me the high on Friday is going to be 11 degrees, and it's not. Well, let's try to do that again here. But anyway, so I'm not sitting here wasting air time doing, talking about that. So I will still plan on getting my Friday ones if I can. Uh, the, the app's messed up. It's just not working. Anyway, it's supposed to rain all day, all right? So um, if I can get that, there will be a video about that as well. So we're looking at maybe four more of these moon videos. And then that's going to be it for the year. Um, on astronomical stuff unless we can catch an ISS transit because now that it's warming up and spring is finally here I cut the grass for the first time um, the field geology field season is going to start and we got we got a lot of stuff to do and a lot of things planned that we need to do nine plus I got to start working on the next paper so anyway if you enjoyed this video, please like. If you haven't already subscribed, if you have any comments, feel free to leave them. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. But anyway, that's it, and I hope you learned something.